Hey guys, it's Carolyn. Um, long time to see. I know, I'm sorry. Um, I've just been really busy at work and the weather has been complete crap and I've been having uploading issues with my videos, so yeah, I'm sorry. Um, and th the thing is, is that there have been, I've done several videos in the last, like, um, maybe month and a half, but they have all either had terrible lighting, so I have then deleted them, or they have been, um, like, longer, so they didn't upload properly, and I'm very sorry about that. Um, so some of them, unfortunately, are totally lost, um, and I don't really want to refilm them, because some of them I don't remember what they were, mm -hmm. but, um, well, um, two, two book hauls that I have, uh, are still on my camera, so I think, I think I'll be able to upload those, I hope, um, and I'm starting, coming back with a rather large haul, which I maybe shouldn't have done, but, uh, the thing about my, my book buying ban is I decided to do this thing where I was only going to have specific books that I was going to get, um, throughout the year, and then that was it, um, but, that put too much limitation on it and made me feel like, oh, hey, um, I need to buy all of, like, so many books at once, uh, which is not good. Um, apparently the words buying ban and diet just do not work with me because it makes me want to buy a whole bunch of books and when I have the word diet in mind, I just want to eat a whole bunch of sugar and pasta and stuff. So, um, what I've decided is just whenever I have extra money, if I want to buy a book with it, then I will. Um, which, unfortunately, it might increase my TBR pile, but, um, I mean, since I'm out of my slump now, I don't feel guilty about buying books anymore. Um, because when I was in my slump, I was in my slump for, like, from, like, Christmas until, like, two weeks ago. And I, during that entire space of time, felt so guilty about buying any book, um, even if I really wanted it, because I was like, I don't feel like reading anything right now, so I'm not going to get to this for a while. Why am I buying it now? But I have self-control problems. So anyway, um, that's enough. That's I, I've done enough talking, and I'm going to just get on with the haul. Um... These aren't really in any particular order. I'm not really going to go in the order in which I bought them because they're kind of all over. Um, one book that I bought yesterday is um, This Star Will Not Go Out. Won't Go Out. Not Will Not, but Won't Go Out um, by Esther Earl and uh, also by her parents, uh, Lori and Wayne Earl, with introduction by John Green. Um, and for those of y'all who do not know, um, John Green met Esther Earl, um, years, I don't know what the year was, but he met her and she had thyroid cancer and he just thought she was the coolest person ever because she had such a fun outlook on life still, even with her cancer. She like, she didn't let it get her down. She just lived each day to the fullest, which, you know, everyone should. Um, and unfortunately, very sadly, she passed away at 16 years old, um, I think in 2010, but I don't remember the year, but I think it was 2010. Um, maybe not, I'm not entirely sure. But, um, yes, this book was published after her, um, passing. It was published, uh, maybe just like a month or two ago. Um, and it has all of her, uh, journal entries, poetry, drawings, um, pictures of her, just all this great stuff about her life. And, um, it also has stuff in it from her parents and her friends. And, um, it's just, it's really fantastic. And, um, I'm not sure if all of the money from each of these books, I think it's a certain portion of money from each of these books goes to, um, the foundation that her parents created in her name, um, because she was a very giving person, so her parents wanted to, um, continue that in her honor, um, and it's just, it's 
so cool, and I'm looking so forward to reading this. Um, yes, so I want to read this one before I read Fault in Our Stars, and I'm going to read both of these uh, before the Fault in Our Stars movies movies movie comes out, which is June. So this and um, Tiffios are on my list before that happens. Um, and for those of you who are interested, um, not only in this book, but um, just in Esther's story in general, um, she has she had a YouTube channel um, where she made videos, and um, that is still active, I believe. I think her parents just left it up um, so that people could still see her videos um, that she made, and I don't remember... Um, I don't remember the name of it. it. I know it has her name in it, but if you just YouTube Esther Earl videos, I'm pretty sure that her channel will come up. Um, and I spent way too much time talking about one book. But anyway, um, so yeah, the rest of this haul might go kind of quickly. Um, but in that same uh, haul, I got um, My Life Next Door by Huntley Fitzpatrick. Um, for those of you who've been watching my channel um, for a bit, you know that I read this book at, like, the end of last summer, or, like, maybe in September, um, and just fell in love with it. It was one of my top, uh, books of last year, um, I'm pretty sure, and it was amazing. Um, it's definitely a really good summer read, but you can really read it anytime. Um, I think it's very poignant and moving, so... Yeah, and this is the kind of book it will, like, you will be loving it, and then it will rip your heart out, and then it will carefully put the pieces back together again. Um, it's just really good. Um, and then I also got one that I've been looking forward to for quite a while, and that is um, Amy and Roger's Epic Detour by Morgan Matson. Um, I was just really in the mood for a uh, fun contemporary when I was in the bookstore yesterday because, um, I am reading, uh, I just finished Divergent and I'm reading Insurgent now, and I've just been reading all of these, like, intense, uh, dystopian or fantasy things recently, and I really want something light, uh, so... I hope this is late. I don't know, but everybody says it's great. Um, it actually, the year it came out, it got, um, on the ALA's top, top ten best fiction for young adults. Um, so that's really cool. Um, and then... I got... The Collector's Edition of Insurgent. Um... And it's shiny, I know. Um, and this is just the cover. The book is actually right, uh, right here. Um, it's got the Amity symbol and the Be Strong, Be Roth. And this is just really cool. Um, I took the jacket off because it's just really, it was one of those jackets that just falls off anytime you open the book. So I figured I would just take it off while I was reading it. Um, and I'm currently reading it and I'm a good chunk of the way through via this little ribbon. I'm over halfway, and I'm really loving it. I'm hoping to finish it tonight. Um, I'm just, I love it. Um, cause, okay, the story with this is I was not going to read Divergent, um, and then I saw the preview for the movie, and it looked so amazing that I was like, okay, y'all got me. I will jump on the bandwagon. And I loved Divergent. I thought it was great. Um, and originally I was just going to treat it as a standalone because people said that they didn't really like this one and that the third one people were equally divided on as far as, like, people who liked the ending didn't really like the rest of the book and then people who hated the ending, um, either didn't like the book at all or they liked the, the book up until the ending. Um, so I was really torn, but I liked the writing so much in Divergent that I really wanted to move on to this one. Um, but I still might not read Allegiant, uh, depending, I'll see where I feel, like, how I feel when I get to the end of this one, um, but, because I spoiled the ending for myself, and the thing is, I, at first, was like, that's a really stupid ending, but then I read an article about why Veronica Roth ended it that way, and I was like,
do, I'm now starting to see the build up to that ending and like understand why she ended it that way. Um, so I don't agree so far with the people who are like, oh my gosh, that came out of nowhere. Like, that's so stupid. I'm like, no, it definitely didn't come out of nowhere. It, you can see it coming, um, from the other books. But, uh, I am worried about the writing though, because one of the people who said she didn't like the rest of the book said that Veronica Roth basically like changes for his character entirely for the majority of the book. And I'm like, why would you do that? I don't understand. Like, why would you completely... The way she made it sound was as if someone else wrote Allegiant and Veronica Roth wrote Divergent and Insurgent. So that was kind of weird. Like, I don't know. So we'll have to see. But yeah, okay. I'm sorry. I'm talking too much. Um, next we have... Um, actually, you know what, you guys... I'm going to make this a two-parter and just talk about the rest of these um, in a part two because I've been talking too long and I'm very sorry about that. I just, I haven't done this in a while, so I'm rambling. But anyway, um, I will, that's it for part one and I will see you guys in part two. Bye. Thanks for watching.